Hi there everybody, great to be with you looking into God's Word and the wisdom that He has for us today. Uh, I certainly don't come into uh, these occasions thinking that I have anything to offer other than God's Word. I'm not a wise person, I made many mistakes, failed many times in my life. One thing that you want to do when you do fail, when you do make mistakes, is you want to learn uh, from those failures, from when things go wrong. You want to learn, always be learning, always be advancing, not having those situations drag you down and pull you back and tie you up and have you in knots, but to be free uh, learn and move on. Any wisdom that we find, we find together as we look at God's word because wisdom doesn't come from a man, wisdom comes from above. Yeah, and if you can have the wisdom that is from above, then that's the answer to everything. Today, we're looking at Psalm 40. It begins... I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry and lifted me out of the mud and mire. Have a look at the situation there. David's talking about being in the mud and the mire. And he set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. And he put a new song in my mouth. And then it says, The things you planned for us, God, the things you planned for us, no one can recount to you. Were I to speak of them, they would be too many to declare. My. What do you do when you're stuck? Stuck in your ways. Stuck in your past stuck in your sin, stuck in your problems, stuck in a debt that you can't repay, stuck in a destructive relationship, stuck in addiction. You thought you were the only one feeling like that, but being stuck is the common experience of humanity. And Psalm 40 begins with first Adam, natural man, stuck in the mud, stuck in the mire of sin, crying out for help. In Genesis, when Adam fell, even though he was hiding from God, he was also crying out to God for help. And so God comes looking, Adam, Adam, where are you? And God saved him. Now, Adam is us. It's you and it's me. It's natural man. And we're stuck. And we're running from God, yet simultaneously we're crying out to him. We're crying out to God in so many ways. And he saves us and sets our feet on solid ground, on a rock that according to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, the rock is Jesus. And he puts a new song in our mouths to replace the depressing, sorrowful dirges of our past and brings us into our destiny. The things you planned for us, David says, no one can count. My, my, my. David then explains how God makes all this happen. He says in verse 6, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require. And then I said, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me, I delight to do your will, O God. 
Yea, your law is within my heart. Now Hebrews chapter 10 verses 5 to 7 tells us that these are actually the words of Jesus, that David was scribing the words of Jesus. And this provides us with the exegetical clue, the interpretive tool necessary to unravel the meaning of this prophetic oracle. So when it says, a body you have prepared for me, it's speaking about the incarnation. Jesus became fully man for all humanity. Next it says, then I said, lo, I come, speaking of the willingness of the Son of God to do everything necessary, to become everything necessary, to save us. Then it says, in the volume of the book, it is written of me, meaning Jesus fulfills all the Old Testament, everything from the law and the prophets, all the prophecies, all the demands, he is the fulfillment of it all. And when he says, I desire to do your will, O my God, he's saying, every crooked path that we have trodden, Jesus has made straight. Where we failed, he did not fail. What we could never do, Jesus did for us, not just as our substitute, but as one of us, he straightened out all of our crooked paths. The great church father Athanasius said, Christ became all we are so that we could become all he is. The thing we've been waiting for, waiting patiently for, the psalm says, is so revolutionary that it changed everything. The revolution is found in the incarnation. What the incarnation means is that all of the things that God planned for you, the things that seemed beyond your wildest dreams, he has made possible. Mark 9.23 says, all things are possible for him who believes. That's the thing that puts a new song in your mouth. So why don't you worship God on account of Jesus? Everything that he did to enable you to become everything you can become in Christ. Yeah. It's going to be a good day because Jesus has placed you upon solid ground, brought you out of the mud and the mire, sets you free from everything that you're stuck in. Yes, to bring you into everything that he planned for you. God bless you. Have a great day. And we'll speak again tomorrow.